Hello everyone. Today is January 1st, 2014. I'd just like to take this opportunity to wish everyone a Happy New Year. And a, happy, a new year that is filled with good things, most especially uh, well-being. That you may all find well-being in the new year. We consider well-being to be more important than uh, what we might call happiness because the word happiness implies some sort of a feeling that is ephemeral um, subject to uh, the, the changes in life so get it sometimes or without it most of the time or much of the time uh, whereas well-being though it implies happiness it's a sort of happiness that is lasting it's a, sen uh, a sense of contentment and so we tend to uh, wish, wish each other well-being in the new year. The, um, the Buddha gave a specific teaching on well-being. He used this word to describe uh, what he thought was the goal for beings in the world, so you be the humans or, or any type of being that might exist. What we're all looking for is well-being. We could say we're looking for happiness, but the word he used was well-being. He said there are four things that you need to find well-being in, in this universe. And uh, so I just like to pass these on as a sort of a New Year Dhamma. The first is that we need wisdom. Obviously this is the most important in Buddhism. Without wisdom you can't be expected to understand what is uh, for your benefit and, and to your detriment. Uh, wisdom is what allows you to make decisions that lead to your own happiness and, and the happiness of others, your own well-being and the well-being of others. It's what uh, allows you to find the right path and to find the right way for you in the world uh, to, to make the right decisions and so on. We consider wisdom to be the highest that all other qualities of mind, whether they be uh, compassion or love or joy or uh, contentment, equanimity, these kind of things, humility, they all require wisdom if they don't have wisdom, it's just a fake, uh, artificial construct. They don't come from the heart. It's for something to come from the heart, it requires a true understanding of its benefit, uh, an inna innate understanding of uh, the benefit of it. And to, to likewise, to remove unwholesomeness requires understanding. To, to abstain from anger and greed and delusion requires wisdom. So that's the first one. The second quality is effort, exertion. That uh, nothing is to be gained through uh, lazing around. The Buddha said, Viryena dukkamajeti. We are able to overcome suffering through effort. It's not something that can be done without putting out effort. Effort to be moral, to avoid uh, unwholesome deeds, and to avoid killing and stealing. It's, it's easy to tell people not to get angry and want to hurt each other and to t greedy and want to steal from each other and deluded and want to take drugs and alcohol and and so on, but our addictions and our, our habits lead us back ever and again to these things. So uh, the breaking of habits requires effort, and the, the, the cultivation of wisdom also requires effort, uh, effort in meditation, abstaining from bad, unwholesome deeds, cultivating good deeds, both of these require, wis require effort, and the purification of the mind re requires effort. If we're going to be a good person and help others, if we're going to be charitable and generous and kind, we have to pull ourselves out of our inertia, our, our habits of, uh, of, of being lazy and, and, and indulgent and so on. Number three, we need to guard our senses, the eye, the ear, the nose, the tongue, the body and the, the mind. Uh, guard here doesn't mean to we have to avoid seeing and hearing and smelling and tasting and feeling and thinking. It's not, the point is not to avoid experience. The point is to uh, guard uh, the extrapolation of experience, so the judgment, the partiality. Uh, in Buddhism, we're, we're, not, we're not trying to limit our experience. We're just trying to limit our reaction to our experience, to one that is objective and, and wise. So when you see, you should know that you're seeing. You shouldn't know that that's bad, that's good, and, and uh, me and mine and get angry and upset and, or addicted and attached to it. When you hear, when you smell, it's, it's not that we can't 
experience, the whole range of experience. It's that uh, we, we have to be very careful to stay objective so that we don't cultivate addiction, we don't cultivate partiality, we don't cultivate these, these memories in the mind that brought me pleasure, that was a good thing, or, or that brought me suffering, that was a bad thing, and, and therefore cultivate uh, aversion and, and, and uh, attachment, you know, which of course lead to pushing and pulling and uh, eventually suffering, or inevitably suffering. So guarding our senses is very important. It's not that we repress our, our experiences, but um, filtering them so that the dirt stays out and the experience alone comes in. And seeing is just seeing, hearing is just hearing, and so on. And number four is we have to give up everything. This is the, uh, the claim in Buddhism, is that uh, happiness doesn't come from clinging. The way of the world is that the more you get, the more you hold on, uh, the more happiness you get. The, the more pleasure you attain. And uh, the, the Buddha noticed that this isn't the case. And many religious people have noticed that, that it, this isn't the case, that it's through letting go and giving up that uh, you find true happiness. So in Buddhism, this is the claim that only through letting go can you be truly happy and truly free because true happiness has to be what we call animisa sukha or uh, anamasa. It means uh, anamasa. Means uh, uh, niramasa, Amas, uh, niramisa. Sorry, niramisa, which means uh, having nothing to do with an object, not taking an object. Happiness that it doesn't isn't dependent on something, isn't dependent on what is uh, impermanent. Uh, happiness should be this well-being, should be our uh, contentment with the vicissitudes, vicissitudes of life. If your happiness depends on something. Unless that thing is it, is eternal, is permanent, then it's it's going to create some instability and the potential for loss. You know, loss is a common experience in the world, but for for people who uh, cling to things, for people who hold on who hold on to things, they will inevitably have to suffer loss. If not in this life, then in future lives, because of impermanence, you can't you can't hold on to anything forever. So true happiness. Uh, the way to go to find true happiness is not clinging, it's not depending, it's not uh, hedging your bet that something is going to last and hoping that you get through life without losing the things that you love. True happiness is, is through giving that up, giving up the whole worry and concern about, lo about losing uh, this or that thing. It's through finding true contentment. And so the simile is like um, the difference between someone who clings to something being afraid that they're going to fall if you cling to the side of a cliff, you are being afraid that you're going to fall. This is how most people live their lives, always worried about what the consequences of letting go are going to be, as opposed to a bird that, that uh, lets go of something knowing that they're going to fly or realizes that they're able to fly, and so they, they let go. And this is the change that, we have to come, that has to come about, that we have to realize that to be truly happy, to fly, to not, to not be uh, stuck to anything, we have to let go. To find true happiness, we have to give up our attachments. And, to, and, and that happiness that comes from letting go we call well-being, because it's a state of being that is, uh, is content and at peace with itself for, for eternity. So that is uh, the Buddhist teaching on well-being, and that's the Dhamma for the new year, that we may all find well-being. If we want to find well-being, we should cultivate these four things. It's the kind of framework for resolution that we should have in the new year. So, some food for thought. Thank you all for tuning in and wishing you all a happy and, and uh, well uh, new year, uh, 2014, or whatever year it might be in your calendar. So, wishing you all the best, peace, and happiness. <laughs>